<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching GoldenEye by Martin Campbell starring Pierce Brosnan. Here we are again in a new era with a new Bond. Although I loved Tim Dalton's short stint as 007, I'm ready for the 90s and uh, Pierce Brosnan's take on this iconic character. This time around, not only do we get a new Bond, I believe the entire creative team is also new. Uh, no John Glenn, Richard Maybaum, Michael G. Wilson, Maurice Binder, um, Ken Adam, or even John Barry's music. This is a complete reboot of the series, and I'm very excited to see the direction the franchise takes now. If you guys are unaware, I've been making my way through the entire Bond franchise uh, over the past, what, almost four or five months. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the rest of the movies. And I'll also leave a link to every single Bond film released so far up there somewhere. I'll also be watching the unofficial films after being done with the main ones, by the way. Anyways, about GoldenEye, I don't know what to expect from this film um, at all. I do remember playing the video game on my friend's N64 when I was about eight or nine. Uh, I do remember the split screen multiplayer who could forget that? And I've also probably watched my dad watch this movie when I was younger. So I don't remember anything at all, but I remember my dad liking it. So there's that. I'm pretty excited. But before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page for full interviews and reactions to this movie and over, what, 180 movies, two TV shows, early access, and weekly polls for what to watch next. You'll need your own copy to watch along. The link's in the description below, by the way. Please consider being a patron. Please subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon for instant notifications to check out my other videos. Like if you like this video, dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. GoldenEye, Campbell, Brosnan, let's go. We've officially entered the 90s with a six year gap between Bond films. I think this is the biggest gap between Bond movies. The question is, do we start with a cold open or not? Look at this wide shot of the dam. Where are we? Holy crap, I think this is an actual stunt. Wow. I love the absolute silence. Dude, we have gadgets. Uh, chemical weapons facility, USSR, okay. So, wait, this is before the fall of the Soviet Union. Beg your pardon? Forgot to knock. <laughs> <laughs> nice intro for Brosnan's Bond. I'm alone. Aren't we all? Dude, Sean Bean! I did not know Sean Bean is in the movie. I wonder whether he dies in this one? Because Sean Bean has a reputation of dying in movies. I'd be a little disappointed if Sean Bean doesn't die or get injured. <laughs> Set time is six minutes. Six minutes. Check. Fire! Move out. Throw down your weapon and walk towards me. Finish the job, James. Blow them all to hell. <laughs> Ten. Nope. Nine. Oh. Eight. For England, James! <laughs> I'm laughing because Sean Bean just got killed. <laughs> this is your last chance. As expected. Come out with your hands above you. <laughs> wow, this scene is unexpectedly tense. You can't win. Dude! <laughs> I love when villains say you can't win just before they lose. Great stuff. Wow! How are they doing this? Compositing work? I think it's compositing. What a cold open. See reflection. Sean Bean. Okay. 
Why is he receiving top billing if he died in the first five minutes? Hey, I know um, this actress, Janssen. I, I can't pronounce her first name, but she played Jean Grey in the X-Men movies. Alan Cumming. Okay. At least we get somebody back. We have Desmond Llewellyn. Title designed by Daniel Kleinman, not Maurice Binder. Oh, Tina Turner. Interesting. She's a legend. Martin Campbell. And I can see the use of CGI in this one for the first time, especially the gun barrel. That was CGI. We have an Aston Martin again. Holy crap. Nine years later, so I'm guessing it's the mid 90s. And we have a Ferrari. I enjoy a spirited ride as much as the next girl, but... It's Janssen. This is a very odd choice of music for a Bond movie. You are just trying to show off the size of your... your Engine? Ego. <laughs> so this version of Bond, he likes to show off a little bit. As you can see, I have no problem with female authority. <laughs> I'm sure you don't, Bond. Toast your evaluation, shall we? <laughs> the way Janssen's character is framed, I think she might be an antagonist. I don't know the rules of Baccarat. Again, I'm more of a Texas Hold'em person. But I'm losing. The name's Bond. James Bond. Xenia Sergeyevna on the top. On the top? On the top. <laughs> They're not even... Your accent, Georgian? Oh, she's Georgian. So it's right next to Russia. I like a woman who enjoys pulling rank. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bond. On a top, Xenia, ex-Soviet fighter oh. pilot. Current suspected links to the Yanis crime syndicate, St. Petersburg. I trust you'll stay on a top. <laughs> They're not even trying to hide the pun. On a top. <laughs> Xenia, I can't breathe. Not the worst way to go. <laughs> he died with a smile on his face. <laughs> like I said, not the worst way to go. <laughs> the first working prototype of the Tiger helicopter. It is the only helicopter to be hardened against all forms of electronic interference. Shh. I have a small surprise from your friends back at the barracks. You think they've gone to heaven? I think they're planning to steal this helicopter. They have no idea that <laughs> it's being stolen. Special Weapons Control Center, Russia. Boris! What? What's the password? All right, I'll give you a hint. They're right in front of you and can open very large doors. You're such a geek. <laughs> it's here. The Tiger Eurocopter. Oh! That's the dude who killed Alec. I mean, Sean Bean's character in the beginning. We're going to test fire Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Dude, what are you doing? Looks like she gets off on killing. She's clearly enjoying it. <laughs> Even he's freaked out. <laughs> I mean, people just died. I shouldn't be laughing, but it's really messed up her psyche. Holy crap, they're activating the GoldenEye weapon, I think. Dude. I don't understand why they're bombing themselves, though. Good evening, Money Penny. And we have a new Money Penny. What would I ever do without you? As far as I can remember, James, you've never had me. I like <laughs> her attitude. Good evening, 007. Tanner? Oh, Bill Tanner. Seems your hunch was right, 007. It's too bad the evil queen of numbers wouldn't let you play it. M. Dame Judi Dench. Oh, looks like she survived. It wasn't a conventional weapon. It looks like it looks like an EMP and causing a lot of them to explode. I'm not sure that's how real EMPs work though, but I'll buy it. I'll buy it for the movie. 
What the bloody hell was that? That was Goldeneye, my friend. And the Tiger Eurocopter is not affected because it's resistant. Could this be an accident? No. Oh. And at least one person probably knows who it is. That's where Bond is going now. Prime Minister's talk to Moscow. They're saying it was an accident during routine training exercise. I'm sure it was just a routine training exercise. Your predecessor kept some cognac in the top. I prefer bourbon. Your predecessor? Okay, they're acknowledging the fact that the old M retired. You don't like me, Bond. You don't like my methods. The thought had occurred to me. Good. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Ooh. A relic of the Cold War. Talk about refreshing this character. I want you to find Goldeneye, find who took it, what they plan to do with it, and stop it. This is actually a pretty well-made set. And actually, I've been enjoying the movie overall. I have concluded this crime was committed by Siberian separatists. He's trying to pass on the blame. Dude, yes. The last vestige of old Bond. Behind the headlights, Stinger missiles. Excellent. I'm going to miss him when he's gone. It's tested for one double O's. <laughs> See what I mean? This film has more humor compared to the last two. Three clicks, arms the four second fuse, another three disarms it. Here we are. Sorry about this, Fred. That'll come in handy later. Do please try and return <laughs> Yeah, you can clearly tell this is a completely new era in Bond. Show me the rules. Please, no. All right, all right, all right. Huh? Oh, so no Felix Leiter in this one? My first operating system was Windows 3.1, then I moved to 95, 98, and then I used Windows Millennium Edition for like two years till XP came out. I don't know whether to trust Alan Cummings' character. Might be a setup for the girl. Are you sure you want to do this? Beautiful architecture. I think this is shot on location and this is not a set. Speaking of sets, I think she is being set up. Oh no. Oh, it's, it's Boris. It's Boris. Hello. He's just a man. Is this Mini Driver? Shaken, but not disturbed. They know each other well. <laughs> they used the chopper to steal a nuclear weapon. Killed a lot of innocent Russians doing it. What do you expect from a Cossack? Who? Cossack, I've heard that before. The British betrayed them, sent them back to Stalin, who promptly had them all shot. Oh, it's Anna Top. She's here. You he don't need the gun. That depends on your definition of safe sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. The legs again. <laughs> oh. Ouch. These are pretty well-made props. Dude! Alec is not dead. Sean Bean didn't die. Back from the dead. Holy crap. So he's behind everything? I trusted you, Alec. Trust. I hope he dies twice in this movie. That'll be twice satisfying. How did the MI6 screening miss that your parents were Leon's Cossacks? Oh! <gasps> His parents were Cossacks! Two-faced Roman god come to life. It wasn't God who gave me this face. It was you, setting the timers for three minutes instead of six. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? No. I'm here! I'm here! Hurry! Hurry up! Come on! Thirty seconds. Oh, the missiles are turning back. Nice! What an explosion! Oh, the things we do for frequent flyer mileage. <laughs> Who are you? I work for the British government. And he's coming clean. The more you tell me, the more I can help you. They're going to kill me, aren't they? Good morning, Mr. Bond. Sit. It was Urumov. General Urumov set off the weapon. I saw him do it. Defense Minister! I must protest! Go! Dude just killed the Defense Minister. And he's going to frame Bond again. Oh 
we are hearing the bomb theme for the first time. But not the whole of it, just a hit. Oh. oh, wow. Never thought I'd live to see the day. <laughs> bomb films usually have car chases. This is a tank chase. <laughs> <laughs> that must be terrifying. <laughs> Again, incredible stunt work. Is this the biggest budget Bond film till date? I mean, come to think of it, compared to Timothy Dalton, we're not seeing him do as much spy work. This is more of an action-oriented James Bond. Bond is alive. He escaped. Good for Bond. Ah. Uh, creepy indeed. To the victor go the spoils. Dude. Oh no. Dude, what are you doing? He's going to derail us. <laughs> I love how she's just smiling about it. That's actually a real flaming train hitting a tank. This is here. So, back where we started, James. It's not the first time you're outnumbered, Bond. What has this Cossack promised you? It's true. What's true is that in 48 hours, you and I will have more money than God. The girl, the mission. Kill her. She means nothing to me. No! Oh no, they're trapped. What are you doing? Boris is online backing up his files. If I can spike him, I might be able to find out where they're going. <laughs> I set the time as for six minutes. Same six minutes you gave me. That's a lie. That means three minutes. What does that mean? We've got three minutes. Exactly. It is a sea master. Mine's black. What I sit on, but I don't take it with me. Chair. Come on! Wait! He's in Cuba! Havana! No! No! Another gorgeous explosion. Do you know how to disarm the weapon? I suppose that depends on what kind of weapon you're talking about disarming. <laughs> of course she's falling for him. This Bond has a lot more one-liners than I expected. No, Jimbo! <laughs> <laughs> Jimbo. You check her out. Head to toe. <laughs> Another one-liner. Beautiful shot. He was your friend, Trevelyan. And now he's your enemy and you will kill him. It is that simple. Wow, a moment of serious contemplation from Bond. Not like you didn't see her coming. Oh! She always did enjoy a good squeeze. <laughs> that was the best one. That was the best one so far. No wonder we couldn't see it. Where did they find such a big satellite dish? They're still alive. Kill him. Target is London. They're going to use it on London. <laughs> yeah, the satellite miniature is pretty well made. Is. Where's the girl? Find her. So how is old Q? Oh, it's the it's the explosive pen. Well, mine doesn't do that. You break into the Bank of England via computer, then transfer the money electronically. <gasps> that makes sense. So he's stealing money from the banks and then destroying all the electronic records. The United Kingdom will re-enter the Stone Age. A worldwide financial meltdown. England is about to learn the cost of betrayal. 
inflation had adjusted for 1945. I mean, I have to admit, Sean Bean has been doing a very good job as a Bond villain. How many clicks was that? She doesn't even have access to the filing codes. Except she encrypted everything. <laughs> that was three clicks. What the hell is happening? Go ahead. Shoot him. It means nothing to nice me. Nice callback. Always call their bluff. I can do it! I can break her codes. Then get on with it! Make a code, Natalia! <laughs> Break your coat? Possibly. Possibly. I love watching stuff blow up in movies. <laughs> Goodbye, dumbass soldier. <laughs> if he moves, kill him. Another opportunity to shoot him. Will he take it? Is the question. I was always better. Just as you fail. Even though it's compositing work, I actually appreciate Broston and Bean doing their own stunt work here. And I love the fact that we have a good old fashioned hand to hand combat scene at the end. For England, James? For me. Oh! We get to see Sean Bean die twice in one movie. And the satellite is destroyed. One thing I did notice is we didn't get to hear the entire Bond theme played. I mean, there were hints of it, but not the entire thing. Oh. Yes! I am invincible! <laughs> He said it again. <gasps> oh. <laughs> and it's instantly frozen in the same pose. Well, not quite invincible, are we? I suppose someone is watching. I bet someone is watching. We've seen this ending many times before. <gasps> Dude. <laughs> So many people were here. And the film ends here. That was so much fun. We are back to the whole crazy world domination stories. Pierce Brosnan did a great job. I wonder what the next one is. Tomorrow Never Dies? I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But I can't wait for it. Okay, I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was just pure fun. What a change in pace for the Bond franchise. While I miss the grounded approach of the Dalton era, I welcome the return of old-school, over-the-top Bond movies. Uh, this has to rank among my top five or seven Bond films so far. Uh, it was just pure, unapologetic action and humor. Martin Campbell did a great job in bringing Bond to the 90s, and I'd say the other strengths of the film uh, to be Brosnan's, uh, Bean's, and Janssen's performances the excellent production values, by that I mean the stunts, explosions, and gadgets, and the overall pacing of the movie. Whereas the main weakness, in my opinion, was the score, uh, which I felt was a little underwhelming. I don't believe we even got to hear the iconic Bond theme in, in, in full throughout the entire runtime. Maybe the beginning when he's shooting down the barrel, but that's it. We don't actually get to hear the main Bond theme. Anyways, let's start with the directing by Martin Campbell and the script by Jeffrey Kane and Bruce Feierstein. Feierstein, please correct me if my pronunciation is wrong. I really felt like this writer-director combo did a fairly good job in bringing Bond to the post-Soviet era. We waste no time with an excellent cold open filled with amazing stunt work and spectacle. The story was pretty straightforward, except a big twist I did not see coming, uh, that Alec was the real bad guy. I mean, I should have known better with Sean Bean getting top billing in the credits, but uh, and when he was killed off in the beginning, I celebrated because <laughs> Sean Bean has to die in everything he's in. But on the other hand, I completely forgot about his character till his reintroduction. We, we, 
come to think of it, we got to see Bean die twice in a single film. I don't think we have ever seen that before. So I got twice the satisfaction. I thought that the golden eye weapon was pretty smartly used, uh, at least narratively. Uh, if, if it were just any conventional bomb, they couldn't have used it uh, twice. But since it was an EMP, we got to see it in action at the beginning. And that helped raise the stakes in the final act when it was pointed towards London. We, we, we knew the devastation it could have caused. So I like that. It, it really, I wouldn't say grounded the film, but it really raised the stakes. Surprisingly, all the performances in the movie were pretty solid. Sean Bean did a great job with his character as he was giving, given a personal motivation for his actions. A lot of Bond villains just want world domination. But his character was seeking revenge against for, for his family uh, and just wasn't out for money or, I mean, the destruction of London's economy was his main goal with the money being the cherry on top. I'd say he was a fairly written Bond villain. While Sean Bean was great, uh, Janssen's performance as um, Xenia on the top <laughs> was even better. I'm sorry, I still can't pronounce her first name, so could you phonetically write down the pronunciation of Janssen's first name, that'd be very helpful. She might rank as one of the best Bond villains so far, at least henchmen so far. I mean, nobody can beat Jaws, but she, she comes close. I think her love for pain uh, was fairly well used in, in, the, in the context of the movie. Janssen really bought a lot of character to, to her performance, and she really stole almost all the scenes she was in. Her death was very well done, but a little unsatisfying, I think, as I really hope she would have died the same way she killed others, either by asphyxiation or at least something related to pain. I mean, she did die a painful death, but it was really fast. It's fine though, it's, it's just a minor nitpick. The best performance of the movie had to be from Pierce Brosnan as 007. From the First scene, he was Bond, and I really liked his take on the character. He was more humorous and lighthearted compared to his predecessor, but uh, also knew the seriousness or gravity of his mission. There was a scene on the beach where he was actually contemplating his actions uh, about taking Alex's life, which was very important to the character's development. I also liked the number of one-liners in the movie. I don't think all of them were bangers or all of them hit, but most of them were very funny. Uh, this Bond also used a lot of gadgets, which I loved. And we also see the return of the Aston Martin with an introduction to uh, BMWs and Omega watches. By this time in the Bond franchise, product placements were commonplace, a practice which is still true today. The final set piece was great to watch too with a lot of action and sensationalism. The great job, uh, great job in the writing, directing and acting departments. I loved how they complemented each other to bring spectacle back to the franchise, if that makes any sense. The cinematography was pretty good, although I wouldn't say it was amazing. I mean, some of the other Bond films had amazing cinematography compared to this one. Apart from that incredibly cold open and some scenes in Cuba, it was pretty standard, but the editing, on the other hand, was solid. There was not a moment of boredom in the entire runtime, and I thought the story was tight and paced very well. The score for me was the weakest link. I do miss John Barry's music. Some of the music was a little out of place, especially when the director was going for a more humorous approach. I believe we even got to hear turntables and DJs, and uh, which I don't think went very well with the tone of the movie. I don't know if you agree with me on this. Moreover, we don't even hear the main Bond theme, <sighs> even during the climax of the movie, which was a little disappointing. I don't know what to make of that, honestly. This film needed a more traditional Bond score, if you ask me. The sound design was pretty good though, with the explosions being the highlight. And speaking of explosions, holy crap, they were fantastic. Probably one of the 
biggest strengths of the film, Bond in a tank chasing. <laughs> I mean, a tank chase in a Bond movie that through the streets of Russia. Holy crap, that was awesome. The stunt team also did a great job, and most of the CGI and practical effects look fairly realistic, even the model, the miniature of that uh, golden eye weapon, the satellite was very well made. So no complaints in that department either. As I have mentioned my main criticisms of the score, overall, GoldenEye was an instant Bond classic, returning the franchise to spectacular form. From Martin Campbell's direction, to the new writing team, to the excellent acting from the cast, to the production values, it was top tier entertainment, which is what it's meant to be. Pierce Brosnan's first Bond performance was commendable. So was the surprising amount of humor he brought to the character and his assortment of gadgets, which we all love. I wish the score was a little better though, but apart from that, this has to rank among the better Bond films so far. I think Tomorrow Never Dies is next, and I cannot wait to review that. Anyways, thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Consider being a Patreon. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you liked this video. Dislike it if you didn't. I will see you in the next one. Bye.